Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Azure Infrastructure Update. It is the 1st of November and it's the Halloween edition. So myself and my dogs Ollie and Eddie are dressed up as Superman. It seemed like a good idea at the time. Anyway, so let's go through what's been new in the past week. Um, new videos. I posted part eight of the Azure Masterclass. This was all about application services. So deep dive into containers, AKS and app services. And then a deep dive on role-based access control and policy actually for Azure Key Vault. Um, and as always, if this is useful, please go ahead and give this a like, comment. Maybe don't share it this week. This seemed like a good idea at the time. Now I'm really rethinking that. Um, but certainly you can comment uh, and like. Um, so what's new? On the compute side, so now we have Java 11 support for Azure Functions. So that serverless offering, we can actually now go in and when we select Java, we'll actually see a version 11. Previously, it was just version 8. Um, now, in the drop down, when we select the Java stack, we actually have an 11 option. Azure Batch has actually expanded with some new VM series support. So if we actually go and look at this, it will show us the new virtual machines that are actually now supported. See, if I just jump over, we can see all of these new ones have now actually been added um, and can be used with Azure Batch. And that's in addition to all of the existing ones. You go and click Learn More to kind of see that complete list. Um, Azure Monitor will now show the capacity of your persistent volumes for your AKS clusters. And this is in preview. So remember, the whole point of persistent volumes is ordinarily we think of containers as no durable state. So I can think about, well, I have kind of my, my AKS node, and I have kind of a pod, and in that pod is my kind of container that's actually running my workload. But if I want some kind of durable state, I have to store that somewhere. So I can think about kind of um, Azure Files. I can think about Azure Disk. And what we actually can do is we can create these persistent volumes on those, which will go and use those types of storage. And they actually get mapped to a particular pod by a persistent volume claim. So we kind of have this relationship. So what this change is letting us do now is through actually Azure Monitor, we can see the capacity of those persistent volumes. Um, also on Azure Kubernetes Service, it now supports Azure Spot and Proximity Placement Groups. So remember, Azure Spot is the ability to use that spare capacity that's available in Azure regions for a much cheaper price. I've covered that a lot in previous videos. But now we can actually see, well, what, what's the chances of actually getting evicted and what's kind of the common prices? Proximity placement group is all about getting things close together. So we're used to the idea of, well, we have a region and we might have kind of multiple availability zones, which are different facilities with calling power communications. So that could be kind of AZs. And then I might also have availability sets. That's the idea of, well, there's multiple racks in these things, and my availability set will kind of spread things out over those racks. So that's all about really separation. Well, sometimes I want things really close together. And so what proximity placement group does is I create this proximity placement group and then the first thing I put in it will pin it to a certain portion of a data center. So for example, I could create a proximity placement group and then I'll put something in it in AZ1. And what it's now gonna do is gather those resources together um, as close as it can. So now with AKS, I could create a node pool. So I create my node pool in a proximity placement group. So now all the nodes that actually make up that node pool will actually be placed in that proximity placement group. 
sorry, Eddie didn't like being trapped in the room. So that proximity placement group will keep things close together. So I create my node pool. I say, hey, I want to put it in a proximity placement group. It will now keep it within a lower latency than I would typically see by just placing in an AZ. From a storage perspective, um, Azure policy can now actually be used to control the minimum TLS version. Now, ordinarily, if I just go and look at the portal, if I go and look at, for example, storage accounts, I can absolutely, I'll just look at any of them, it doesn't matter. If I go to configuration, I can pick the minimum TLS version. So here you can kind of see the drop down, and I can pick. I can say, okay, yes, what TLS version do I want? But what I can now do with Azure Policy is I can configure that as well. Now there's no built-in definition. So what we actually will do is for now, um, on this link actually, it shows you what the definition would be. So it tells you how you can create it and then actually walks through, hey, it's this Microsoft.storage slash storage accounts minimum TLS version. And then I can put the TLS version I actually want. So just kind of zoom in on that. Here we can see, hey, I can set that minimum version. And if it's not that, well, I could audit it, for example, in this example, or maybe even I would choose to deny it. So I get those choices. This is really hot. Um, I can now audit Microsoft support for my Azure SQL database and my Azure SQL managed instance. So what does that mean? If I raise a ticket and Microsoft support has to engage with my um, actual instance, I can now actually audit what they do. So again, if I jump over to the portal and we take a look at this, what I can now have is as part of my SQL database configuration. So it, it's, uh, sorry, SQL Server configuration. So if I go to my SQL Server, not the database, and I'll select it. And if I look at my audit option, you now see this auditing of Microsoft support operations down the bottom. Now, this can only send the data to Event Hub or Log Analytics. I can't send it to storage. But now any operations that the actual Microsoft support teams perform, well, I'll now be able to see that. It will actually be kind of in my logs. So I can kind of get that new visibility. Also, now automatic SQL in IaaS VM registration. So there's different levels of integration Azure can actually have when I have SQL running in a VM, an IaaS virtual machine. And what happened in the past is if I deployed it from the Azure Marketplace, we got this light management that gives me insight into what's going on. It gives me update capabilities for the SQL servers running inside there. Uh, it gives me easy backup, easy monitoring, easy management of kind of the licensing, uh, and there's more options around that. Well, now I can actually also apply that, and there's no cost for this, to existing and any future ones that I may actually create. So again, if I jump over to the portal and show you this, there's actually kind of a special um, SQL in VM option. So we jump over, and if I go and search for my SQL um, servers, SQL virtual machine actually is what I want. There we go, SQL virtual machines. And we'll now see this option at the top, automatic SQL VM registration. So all I essentially have to do is select the sub, say, yes, I accept, and click register. And now all of my future and current SQL VMs actually running in IaaS will now automatically get that light agent. Now, if I want the full, I can enable that. I, I can make that change. Uh, but by default, it will just be the light management. Um, Azure database for MySQL flexible server can now have up to 10 replicas. So 
Flexible Server is kind of this new offering for those open databases that instead of being container-based, which limits some of the configuration I can do, it's now virtual machine-based. It's still fully managed, but it gives me more configurability of it. Um, I can actually do things like have a synchronous hot standby version, another AZ, I can turn that on. I can start and stop them. Uh, I can use like burstable virtual machines but I can also now add up to 10 read replicas in the same region. Now these are using the binary log uh, copy capability of MySQL. It is asynchronous, there's gonna be a little bit of a lag, but if I have a use case where I have a very read heavy workload and I wanna be able to have those additional read replicas, uh, I can now add up to 10 read replicas. I have to add them as read replicas, I can't convert an existing. I would go ahead and just add those read replicas to my existing uh, MySQL uh, flexible deployment. I'll pay for it just as a regular flexible instance, but now my read-only workloads can trigger off of that and really just help my overall scale. Miscellaneous, and there's a new data centers planned for Taiwan. There's been a bunch of cost management updates um, so the October 2020 was released, and I'll just link to this in the notes. You can kind of read this uh, in your own time. But it kind of talked about the Azure Advisor score that I've mentioned in the past. It walks through creating ARM templates actually to deploy subscriptions. And um, it does a link to that in there. So you can actually go through these examples. Um, there's new the cost management labs capabilities, new ways to save money. So just some general kind of tips that you can take a look at, but that's now out and available. And Azure AD has a new password spray detection capability. So password spray is one of those types of attack where the attacker, rather than bombarding you with thousands of different passwords, takes a couple of very common passwords and slowly attacks. So it, it's just a few common passwords, it's low and slow, on an individual tenant, you probably wouldn't notice it. But what now Azure AD is doing across all of the tenants, they actually will be able to see a pattern. So they will now actually showcase, hey, we're seeing this um, password spray attack for an Azure AD P2 with identity protection. It will actually surface as a new specific risk detection. So you'll actually be able to see it um, for free in P1, there'll just be kind of a heightened risk, but you won't know the details of it. Um, but definitely now this is the kind of a new type of detection available to you. And that's it. As always, please comment below if you dare. Um, but I hope that was useful. Um, I hope you had a great Halloween and, and stay safe as always. And uh, until next week, take care.